So, I really don't think there's anything worse in the world than when you really love a movie. You watch a brand new movie and it's one of your favorite things. It makes a ton of money. It's a critically a success. And then you get the sequel. Years and years of waiting for it. Sometimes maybe decades. And then once that sequel comes out, it's a steaming pile of shit. Now, this is definitely one of the worst feelings, and it's something that does happen quite often in Hollywood, to be quite honest with you. It's happened a lot recently. And in this video, I kind of want to talk down some of the worst, I want to talk about some of the worst sequels that we have ever seen in the history of Hollywood. Now, I have some rules with this list. First off, these are only going to be sequels that I've seen. There's a lot of sequels to movies that I've heard are very, very bad that I haven't watched. These are just movies that I have watched personally, so let me know down below whatever I've missed. More than likely, I haven't watched it. Also, I'm valuing something here. I'm valuing sequels that maybe damaged the franchise that they were in. Sequels that either killed or really, really hurt the franchises that they exist in. Because movies that did that amount of damage have to be so bad to a level that it really eclipses everything else. Because sometimes you get bad sequels, like the Marvel movies. There's a bunch of bad sequels in the Marvel Universe that aren't going to be on this list. Because guess what? The Marvel Universe is still kicking ass most of the time. I know they're struggling right now, but they're still making a billion movies a year, so who cares? Besides that, everything else is free game. So yeah, I'm gonna start going one by one and break down all of my least favorite movie sequels. These are also in no particular warning, and there might be some slight spoilers ahead, so be prepared. You can't make a video discussing movie sequels without mentioning Batman and Robin. Well, you can make an argument that this spot should probably go to the film's predecessor, Batman Forever, the film that really damaged the franchise before this one. I would still make the case that this film is a lot worse, because Batman Forever, at the very least, had a little bit of charm, a little bit of wit specifically from the cast with Jim Carrey being very fun to watch and of course I, I kind of like Val Kilmer as Batman maybe I'm the only one the same can't really be said about Batman and Robin I mean this film lacks all charm it lacks all charisma it's just a movie that's so goofy and so cringy that it's just almost unbearable to watch the Clooney star film pits Batman and Robin the brand new Bat family up against Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze and also Poison Ivy and Bane and Arnold Schwarzenegger is extremely miscast in this role he's goofy he is a pun machine machine and he is just not fun to watch. We no longer also have the gothic and dark vibes from the Burden and Keaton era of this universe. Instead, we kind of get these bright neon-y type sets that actually kind of look okay in retrospect, but are just not really Batman-y at all. And you also get bat nips, because fuck it, why not? Let's have bat nips. This film was panned by critics. It didn't do well at the box office. It was so, so bad that it ended up canceling Schumacher's planned fourth movie, or, or third movie, which is supposed to be called Batman Unchained, which actually kind of sounded better than this. It kind of sounded okay, like a decent idea. But that film obviously was never made, and instead we got the Christopher Nolan trilogy of films about a decade later, and thank God for that. This movie is just a perfect example of not, how not to handle a comic book trilogy, how not to handle a comic book sequel, and just how not to handle a big franchise with a character that the filmmaker clearly did not very much understand here. There's really nothing like having a cult classic movie, a movie that people just absolutely love, a movie that you love personally as a child, right? A movie that you grew up with, and seeing that they're finally making a sequel. For me, that was the first Space Jam movie. I love loved Space Jam as a kid. This combination of both Looney Tunes and one of the greatest sports stars ever, Michael Jordan, who surprisingly had so much screen presence and so much charm that it made the movie work so much, and combining both those aspects to make such a fun, and a movie that hasn't really aged particularly well, but a movie that was so fun for my childhood and so memorable and so amazing that the idea of doing a sequel and bringing Michael Jordan back was so exciting to me. So when word spread that there was a sequel, my excitement, this, this idea of seeing uh, Michael Jordan lace up the shoes again to get him back in the film and make a beautiful sequel to the cold classic. I was so excited and then, dear God, no, not LeBron James, what the fuck? LeBron James, the wannabe goat of the modern day NBA, just coming in and stealing the spotlight. This movie screams, and I don't want to say ego, but it kind of screams ego. It's a film that felt like there was very little effort put in, and the entire sell was people will want to see LeBron James in a movie, and they will want to see him in this role, and they will be as open and as excited about it as they were for seeing Michael Jordan. Unfortunately, LeBron James just doesn't have that same screen presence. He doesn't have that same charisma, and the script and the direction and everything going on in this film just does not help it a lot. This movie wanted to be kind of like a reference, uh, a masterpiece, something like Ready Player One, where just a bunch of different aspects of Warner Brothers' uh, a portfolio of licenses and, and franchises can jump in and mix around in this whole Space Jam universe, and it just doesn't work at all. It's mixed with bad performances, bad direction, bad visuals, and it's a movie that just made me very, very upset. LeBron James ruined Space Jam the same way that roided up testicle Dwayne The Rock Johnson is currently trying to ruin WWE by stealing the WrestleMania main event. 
Hashtag, we want Cody. But yeah, Space Jam 2 sucks, so we can we can move on. Now, Jaws is an interesting franchise. Of course, it's one of the biggest names in movie history. You have Spielberg who created the original, and it's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, monster movie ever. It's a movie that defines the genre. It's one of the landmark movies in cinema history. It's a movie that will be studied for years and years. You also have a sequel that might, you know, be deserving to be on this list, but because I don't like it personally, I think Jaws 2 is a piece of shit. But a lot of other people disagree. It's got like 60-something percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It's reviewed pretty well. It was kind of financially a success. So that's not the movie I'm going to talk about. Today, I want to talk about Jaws 3, or like some people call it, Jaws 3D. This is the third Jaws movie, and I'm not going to lie. On paper, the idea for this movie actually kind of sounds good. A movie about a killer man-eating shark that sneaks into this SeaWorld-like park and starts killing guests and different people that are in this area. Starring Dennis Quaid. This sounds like it could be a good movie. Unfortunately, in action, it ends up just being a gigantic money grab, a movie that was made for no other reason than the benefit off the Jaws name. All the performances are wasted, the cast uh, does their best, but like honestly, the script just doesn't do anything for them. The kills aren't as memorable, the tension isn't there because there's something more terrifying about a large ocean, this big, massive body of water, and not knowing where Jaws is, not knowing where this creature is. I kind of connect it to the newest Godzilla film, Godzilla Minus One, not the shitty American ones, and that scene where Godzilla is kind of chasing the boat and they don't know where he is when he's underwater like there's a fear of the ocean that's missing here uh and the film is just kind of a disaster from top to bottom and it's not the one that killed the jaws franchise because i believe they made a fourth one after this that was just as bad if not worse uh but i have not seen that one i have seen this one and this was the film that made me think wow jaws did not need a sequel unless they had gone with steven spielberg's original vision for the sequel jaw uh, spielberg had a vision that he was going to make about a jaws prequel essentially that took place during world war ii and it was sort of a real life story about how these sharks attacked this ship this sunken ship uh, of soldiers and it, it was a much better idea i will link there's a video that i saw from another creator that kind of broke all this down i'll link it on the screen right now and in the description go check that out i recommend it very good video the next two films are sort of like a two for one type thing because they both come from one filmmaker and they're both very very recent films they come from of course david gordon green now before i completely shit on this man i just want to say that he does have a lot of films that i really like so this is not me trying to tell you guys that david gordon green's a bad filmmaker he's not there are probably a lot of reasons as to why these two films are not very good that go beyond him. It just so happens that he directed both these movies, both these sequels most recently. First up is The Exorcist Believer. This is just a really bad movie. It's just, there's nothing good about it whatsoever. It's a, a requel, one of these reboot slash sequel things uh, of this new franchise. It was supposed to be the start of a trilogy that might not be getting made now. And it takes a story of exorcists, and it takes these two new girls who are both possessed. So it's like a two-for-one type story. They're both possessed, and we have to have an exorcism. It's actually on paper. Seems like a simple enough movie that should have worked. In action, it's a mess. It's not scary. The first act is as boring of a first act in a horror movie I've seen in years. The third act is an absolute hilarious disaster, which at the very least I was able to laugh at it. So that's good. The returning characters, Ellen Bernstein's character from the original, is completely wasted. She's pretty much in this movie just to sell tickets in the trailer, uh, and it's insulting, if I'm going to be honest. And the movie as a whole just doesn't work whatsoever. It's just not good, and I hate to hate on it that much, but it's so disappointing because this is a franchise that I think could actually work if it's done right in a reboot, and this is just not, it's not it. And of course, a year before we got The Exorcist Believer, we got Halloween Ends, the trilogy ender of this brand new Halloween trilogy that is actually really great. Now, Halloween 2018 is one of the best requel movies ever. The Return of Halloween, The Return of Michael Myers. It is a phenomenal movie that pits Michael Myers against Jamie Lee Curtis and, and renews this feud from the original film. It wipes away all of the other terrible sequels and relaunches Halloween, and it's so good. It's violent. It's dark. Michael Myers is a meaty, mean motherfucker, and he's just so awesome. Halloween Kills gets a lot of hate. I enjoy the movie. It's just more of the same. Michael Myers killing a bunch of people in the most hilarious ways possible. There's some silly stuff, and there's some stuff that doesn't work. But the movie's well-paced. It flies by. It's a good time, and it ends on a great cliffhanger that sets up a third movie that I still to this day have been waiting for because we did not get it. Instead, we got Halloween Ends, a disaster of a movie. Halloween Ends could have been great, but unfortunately, the writers room decided that instead of having Michael Myers be the main villain, the main threat of the final movie, we were actually going to introduce a brand new character, a brand new threat. This guy named Corey or something. I might have his name wrong. And honestly, in respect to the writers here, the idea of trying to treat the evil of Michael Myers as this contagious symptom, something that can infect literally anybody, that anybody can become as evil as him, is actually a decent idea, and it's something that, if explored right, could have made for a really good movie. The issue is, this was just the wrong time to do it. 
The same way it's the wrong time to do Rock versus Roman. Hashtag we want Cody. So instead of a movie building up to the big final fight between Laurie and Michael Myers, instead we get this random dude and the story revolves around him for the whole runtime. And by the time you get to the third act, you actually do have the big clash that they had been building up to for two years. You get Cody versus Roman. It happens in the third act of this film and you get the satisfying finish. They finish the story. But unfortunately, it just doesn't feel as satisfying because you have this whole little run with this guy, Corey, that kind of took the camera off of uh, Michael Myers, a.k.a. Cody Rhodes, and it, it really, really sucks, it, and it just hurts my bones to even think about, because it's a trilogy that I really loved, and this movie really was upsetting and bad, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. Hashtag we want Cody yet again. The X-Men franchise over the last 20 years has actually been surprisingly strong. You've had a ton of really good movies. You have the original X-Men trilogy, which starred Patrick Stewart uh, and a bunch of other great people, uh, which had really, really great movies in it, and one bad trilogy ender in the Dark Phoenix movie. And then you had the new X-Men, the kind of like the prequel franchise, all the, the younger versions of these characters starring Michael Fassbender, starring James McAvoy, which are great. It was four movies, three of which I thought were great, and one really bad ender, which was the Dark Phoenix movie. So the main question about this X-Men series, all these sequels, is which Dark Phoenix movie is worse? Is it the one that was made, you know, back, be you know, the last stand that was made over a decade ago, or was it the newest one? And for me, it's the newest one. X-Men Dark Phoenix is a weird movie. It's a movie that's filled with some of the best actors working in Hollywood today. It was directed by Simon Kinberg, who is a, you know, pretty credible filmmaker. He's never really directed before, but he's a really good producer and a really good writer. So he's somebody who does understand these characters. And it's a film that just kind of fails for a multitude of reasons. One of which is because this film was kind of being made during the time that Disney was merging with Fox. So I think a lot of the effort and a lot of the excitement in making this movie was kind of drained from it. But the script here just doesn't work at all. It doesn't really understand the Dark Phoenix as a character the story as a whole. I don't think Sophia Turner was completely comfortable playing this character in this role. She really was not great as the character in the previous roles, and there was just like a level of confidence that was missing there. The main villains, you know, the Skrulls that are totally not Skrulls, the Skrulls, they're really boring and forgettable, and I can't even remember. I think Jessica Chastain played one of them, maybe. The fights have some moments in them. There's like a weird train sequence that's kind of okay, I think, for my memory, but this movie just stinks of just studio mishandling. Apparently there's another cut of this movie that's completely different. It's kind of like a Snyder Cut situation. The ending is unsatisfying. And ultimately this is the film that sort of ended the modern X-Men franchise, which was really disappointing because it was actually really great beforehand. And I'm just going to close my eyes and pretend that Logan was the last movie they made. Guillermo del Toro is one of my favorite filmmakers alive. He's legitimately made some of my favorite movies ever. He's one of the best filmmakers working today. And one of his best films was Pacific Rim. This is a movie that is the granddaddy of all kinds kaiju big monster movies ever. It's an amazing movie. It's an homage to every single movie in that genre. It's a movie about gigantic robots kicking big monster ass. It's got a cool world, a, a cool lore to it, a great visual style, and it's just a phenomenal movie. And for years after the release of it, after its critical and box office success, we waited for the sequel, which Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro was attached to do. And then all of a sudden it was announced that he wasn't actually going to be doing it. They are going to bring in another, you know, Yes Men director, and they would make the sequel without him called Pacific Rim Uprising. And I'm going to be honest, I still had some hope for the film. The cast was great. John John Boyega was in it, who we love, and the movie came out, and it, it, it hurt. This is not the sequel that we really wanted. It's a generic CGI monstrosity, a movie that was everything the first film tried not to be, a movie that felt more like a weird spinoff that the studio just had to make to appease fans than an actual sequel that was filled with love and respect for the world that Del Toro was trying to make. This film kind of felt like The Hobbit in a sense, because The Hobbit was a trilogy designed for Guillermo Del Toro to make, and then he backed out last minute, and Peter Jackson kind of had to put the scraps together, and it ended up being a very dull trilogy of films because of that, and this sort of feels like the same thing. It's a film and a universe that was designed for one man, and when that one man backed out of it for different reasons, it, it, they weren't able to capture what that man's vision was for it. And because then we get a very dull movie that wastes its actors, it wastes its world, its action scenes just don't work the same way without Del Toro's visual, you know, style and flair. It just feels like a modern day gigantic action movie, closer to something like the modern day Godzilla films, the American ones, not Minus One, uh, versus something like uh, the original Pacific Rim. Definitely one of the worst sequels, killed all excitement for this franchise, and, and we probably won't get a third movie, which sucks. Another franchise I needed to talk about on this list, and this is kind of going to be a, a three-for-one type placement, is of course The Matrix. Uh, the Matrix, original film, it's one of the greatest movies ever. It's one of the most innovative and incredible pieces of work ever put out. It's famously one of uh, one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite movies, and he's talked about the fact that it was his favorite movie until they released the sequels. Now, I'm not going to go through each and every one of them and describe what I dislike about all of them. All of these movies, on the basis of just talking about films, 
aren't terrible. Uh, they, there isn't a single Matrix sequel that I hate. They're all watchable, they're all fun. The issue is that each one of them sort of pulls down what made the first movie so great. The first movie being this real kind of dive into this human psyche and becoming this weird cult classic that people reference today. I mean, you have Andrew Tate still talking about escaping the Matrix. It's all kind of like this weird mindset that this film has created for people, and it's really an, a revolutionary film, both in its storytelling, but mainly in its visuals, that are just so iconic and so beautiful and so amazing, and the performances are so great. And the sequels have a lot of those same visuals, but it became more of just like a total CGI action fest and it got old really fast and the story just gets so convoluted and it keeps diving and diving into layers of nonsense and nonsense and nonsense that it just becomes kind of a mess and when the new film was announced I was actually pretty excited The Matrix Resurrections and I thought the trailer was great and when I started watching it I thought the first 30 minutes of the movie were great it set up kind of an interesting comeback for this franchise and this story but the film just ends up diving more into the convoluted boring crap that the previous two movies did and ultimately there's a franchise that's kind of on the up and ends. I don't know if we're going to get a fifth Matrix movie, and if we do, it might have to be kind of a total reset and reboot for the franchise, maybe even without Keanu Reeves, because I don't know if you could do any more with what they've done so far, with the characters, with this version of the world. I think it's just kind of boring at this point. But they're not the worst movie sequels of all time. I told you this list was out of order, but it's not. There's one movie, one movie I had here that is easily the worst movie sequel of all time. And of course... It's the rise of Skywalker. Now listen, I'm, I'm not gonna go so hard on this movie because at some point, I don't know when, it might be this month, it might be next month, it might be a year from now, I'm gonna make a gigantic movie on the rise of Skywalker and I'm going to explain very in depth everything that I dislike about the movie. But let me just kind of sum it up here. I think the rise of Skywalker is the worst movie ever made, ever. I think it's just the worst. And let me just put it like this, all right? It's not the worst because it's made bad. It's, it's poorly made. No, it's visually nice to look at. It's made very, very well. The production on it is very well done. It's the worst movie ever because it's the final movie of the greatest franchise of films, the greatest saga of films ever, and they put as much effort into this as cavemen put into wiping their ass. Just none at all. There's no effort put into this movie whatsoever. This movie is a, and I will never say this about any other film ever, it's a disgrace. This is a movie that people should have been fired over. People should have lost their reputation in Hollywood over. This movie is insulting. It insults not only the fan base of Star Wars, but it just insults normal people and our intelligence. The line, somehow Palpatine has returned, is the worst thing ever written, and I honestly feel bad that Oscar Isaac had to say it. I feel bad for the cast involved in this movie, who are all great. I feel terrible for Adam Driver. I feel so horrible for Mark Hamill and for everybody in the original cast of Star Wars. I feel so terrible for Ed, for George Lucas. Oh my god. This movie is an absolute insult. It's so terrible. It's a movie that took all the setup from the previous movies. Even if you hate The Last Jedi, everything that was set up in the previous two movies of this trilogy, everything that was set up in the original trilogy, everything in the prequels, all the themes, all the stories, this world, the politics, the fights, the chaos, the force, everything that for 30, 40, 50 years people had worked on so hard and fans had put all of their effort into, what do we get? We get the revival of a character who was already dead uh, with no explanation of how he's back. We get a terrible final fight where it's pretty much just bzzz, <laughs> like, and Ray just holding the fucking lightsabers and him just not stopping the lightning and saving, it's, oh my God, it's so bad. I'm, I'm getting, I'm just gonna ramble here for minutes and minutes on end, so I'm gonna try to wrap it up. But you cannot make a worse movie than this. You cannot make a movie that has so much going for it, that is the final movie of the biggest franchise ever, and flop this hard. This is the worst movie ever created in Hollywood, in my opinion. It's a movie that nearly killed this franchise. The franchise is literally on life support right now, and Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni are over there just trying to keep it afloat, but it will never, ever, Star Wars will never get back to the hype that it had reached. And I won't even say this movie completely killed it, but the hype that it was at after The Force Awakens, which is a great movie in my opinion. After The Force Awakens, the hype that came from that movie and the hype that Star Wars fans were feeling, which went into The Last Jedi, which was a movie that everybody pretty much hated. My opinion on The Last Jedi was, I will decide how I feel about this movie after I see the third film. Because if the third film takes what was set up here and does something great with it, then The Last Jedi is a great movie. Unfortunately, the third movie did not do that. It took a shit on The Last Jedi, and it took a shit on the other seven films as well, and it just ended up being a total disaster that was made for one purpose and one purpose only, to make a quick buck. Fire Kathleen Kennedy, hashtag we want Cody, and that's the video. So thanks guys, that's all I got for you, so go, go do something else with your day. Just go, or click the video on your screen right now and watch more of my stuff.